Hello everybody, and, uh, and men in particular. I'm going to do another video today on uh, nice guy syndrome. And I apologise for the green screen behind. I'm in Switzerland and it's cold, wet, uh, there's snow on the ground. It's, it's not the time to be doing videos outside in a beautiful place. There is, there is no view outside at the minute. Uh, so yeah, so, so I've done quite a lot of videos by now on the topic of nice guys. And they've all, um, they've all drawn a, an aspect of that nice guy syndrome out. And I thought perhaps it was time to start drawing the pieces together. Because, you know, knowledge is, is one thing. I dare say a lot of you have probably read the book by Robert Glover, right? Knowledge in itself is not sufficient. It's, it's the perception, it's the conclusions that you draw from the knowledge and the actions that you take accordingly that count. Pontificating doesn't work. Ruminating doesn't work. So that's what I, talk, what I want to talk about today, because I've seen people actually go from one end of the spectrum to the other, right? They've, they've learned what it is to be a nice guy. They've self-identified with it and they've said, OK, so I'm never going to do that again. And they become this kind of macho alpha male um, parody of what it was that they didn't want to be. And if you put yourself in the position of a woman, if we still assume that we're kind of putting women on a on a pedestal and um, and, and seeking female approval as a way of justifying um, our self identity, let's say, well, they're going to notice the other extreme and be repelled by it just as much as they were the wimpy extreme, right? They neither of them are credible. Neither of them are authentic. When you're authentic, you don't need to push so hard, I guess is what I'm saying. So how do you get to the point where you don't need to push so hard? See, the thing is, when you're being a nice guy, you're limiting yourself and aspiring to be a more, whatever it may be, more confident, more expressive, more self-assured, more individualized, more potent person. But the, the aspects of yourself that you feel are faulty drag you back, okay? So intellectually, you can go through the process of deciding that it's not that bad after all to be male. That might shift that world view of what it is to be you. And I dare say at some point I will do a video on that kind of uh, cultural story of what it is to be male and how that's not particularly helpful to an individual, even though it's helpful to culture, intriguingly. My basic premise for everybody is that we are working very well based upon the fixed ideas inside of ourselves, based upon the limiting beliefs inside of ourselves, based upon the stories. So somehow or other, you need to be able to look at yourself, objectify yourself, see yourself and kind of go, this isn't working but then somehow or other also get very deep inside of yourself because the sheer act of objectifying yourself kind of compounds the problem, yeah? When you look at yourself in terms of cause and effect, in terms of success and failure, in terms of stimulus response, what you're doing is you're using rules of thumb to get through the day You're enlisting the power of these stories to create a sense of your own identity. But in so doing, in labeling yourself in that way, you're kind of making yourself wafer thin. Yeah? 
Whereas the reality of individuals is that they are multidimensional, they're complicated, they are multifaceted, they are conflicted, they are human beings. And there is a emotional substance which somehow it isn't quite possible to objectify, to put into words. And that is about relating to your common man, to others. But not doing so from the frame of your own story. Because when you, when you relate to someone from within the frame of your own story, you objectify them. You objectify yourself, you objectify everything that you see, and you objectify other people. The bigger picture is that degree of the essence of humanity that can only be felt. I think most people, well, that's a massive assumption, so forget about that. I hope most people have had a time in their life where they have communicated with someone else on a level that is not objectifying, where that other person becomes a you, where you resonate and relate with that individual where you throw away your story and you experience whatever you experience in the now without needing to label it, just going into it. And I know that sounds wide. But that's where I'm hoping that you can head. The act of storytelling to yourself is, is what is maintaining the nice guy issue. In reality, you're as human as everybody else, right? You've got your own ideas, your own goals, your own wants, your own needs, your own frailties, your own fears your own schisms, your own fractures, based upon having grown up the way you grew up. And everybody has a element of that. And we all come to our own conclusions based around our stories, which are based around our expectations, our experiences, the way that we think we are the way we fit in with everything else. And what I'm suggesting is that that objectification of the whole thing, which gives you the hooks by which you understand the world, is limiting in itself. And that the way to break out of being a nice guy is by opening up to things which are not particularly what you might label as masculine, yeah? Opening up to all of you, to the parts of you that you wished weren't there, maybe, to the parts of you that are soft and squishy, to the parts of you that are vulnerable, to the parts of you that are sexual, that the parts of you that are simply they seem to be out of your control to the parts of you that are fearful, the parts of you that make you want to cry into the corner of the room sort of thing. All of it, just all of it. And to be that. 
Because when you can lean into your reality, as much reality as you can open your senses to, in the full knowledge that that's not everything, in the full knowledge that as soon as you start to label it, it's a, a facade, it's a, um, a paper-thin representation of something much deeper, in the knowledge that you'll never quite get to the bottom of it, but the more that you can be and own and experience without internal judgment and be curious and be humble and accept what your current reality is rather than pushing it away. And it might hurt for a brief second, yeah? Because there are uncomfortable truths in there that your, your critical mind, this front of your mind, has been doing a really good job of pushing away. And, and there's an uncomfortableness to this idea that you're shaking the bounds of reality. You're, you're kind of adjusting the actual frame within which your stories sit. And I can't tell you what the conclusion of that will be because my conclusion is completely different to yours. But for me, it was a very settling experience. I had to push through the fear of my unknowing. I had to kind of trust the possibility that it was safe to jump off that cliff and be able to come back on that cliff, even though I'd never jumped off it before. Which is why hypnotherapy came very, very strongly for me, because it was a very good, rapid way of uh, trusting myself. That's why I, I, I like it. It's not that I'm wedded to it, but I found it to be an emotionally stabilizing experience that I could trust pushing beyond my own boundaries. You need a, a support, a crux, you know, maybe it's a peer group of individuals. I, I don't know. For me, it was hypnosis. It could be mindfulness, it could be breathing, you know, it could be meditation. It's nice if it's something which is group based, if that support network is is, is larger than you. And that's kind of going off topic. So you kind of jump off that precipice. You kind of decide that you don't know what you thought you knew. And that what you thought you knew is causing you problems. Yeah, The, the system within which you fit your story is causing you to act the way you do and that there might be a better way to think about it. You don't even need to be sure that there's a better way to think about it, but that there might. Maybe that you need there to be a better way to think about it. And to fill yourself with everything, with all of that observation of what it is to get out of your head and into your feelings. And you might want to do that with some kind of physical exercise, you know? For me, when I go running, that's fantastic. I can see the future when I go running because there's less opportunity for the, the chatter to go. And instead, I have these amazing, stimulating ideas that come up. You might get it through going dancing or painting or some kind of group exercise. I, I don't know, but if there is a way that doesn't feel like you, but that feels safe enough to give a go to, you can learn experiences that don't feel like they should feel like you. 
And somehow or other, then you have to incorporate that into your worldview, into your story of yourself. And so you're expanding what it is to be you. When you know what it is to be you, there's far less need to plug the gaps with other people. Because that's the crux of nice guy. You're seeking solutions outside of yourself. Then you get angry when they don't work because you're portraying a story which is nonsensical. <laughs> you kind of either explode or implode. And then rinse and repeat. Try it again. Because the story inside your head doesn't know anything else. The only way that the story can change is by doing something different. And I don't know what that different is for you. But if it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, if it makes you think, oh, God, that's not me. That might be useful to follow, you know. Ask other people. See what they think and see. Because their perceptions will be different from yours. Seek out a mentor. It's all right to ask for help. It turns out nobody's perfect. But do whatever you can to go beyond what you think it is to be you. And just see what comes back. Just observe the feedback. And if the feedback feels good, go a little further in that direction. If the feedback feels bad, write it down. Tick it off. That doesn't feel much like me. And the more you do that, the more you trust your core, the more you learn about what it is to be you, the better it feels. The better it feels. And the less you seek to justify yourself through other people's approval because you're all right. And so the less you have to lie and manipulate and pretend because you don't need to find stuff outside of yourself. You can find what you are inside of yourself. You can own the full expanse of your um, thoughts and feelings. And so you can just be you. And when you can just be you, well, lo and behold, other people can just be them. And so the thems that are like you attract. And you end up getting the stuff that you always wanted by not trying, by not pushing against the system, but by accepting the system, by going with the system rather than trying to prove yourself. And so things become easier, they become lubricated. You become authentic, credible, natural, easy. You might even feel more easy going because you've got your sense of control back inside of your body, inside your skin. That's not to say that you're controlling everything outside, but that because you can trust what it is to be you, you have more options, you have greater flexibility. And although it's a massive cliche, the end result is you can love yourself. You can look after yourself. You can listen to yourself and know what it is that you want and need. And you don't have to snatch it from someone else. You can find it all inside. And then you can start to consider all of the things that you have done. 
and you can start to forgive yourself for having made mistakes because they were based upon that framework which you thought was right. That's human, but that's not right. And you can't change what's happened in the past, but you can change right now. And you can do stuff differently. And you can maybe even give some kind of a sense of gratitude to all the mistakes that have occurred in the past, because were it not for them, you wouldn't have been led to the conclusion that something needs to give, you know, that brings you to where you are in a gradual state of awakening. It's a truly exquisite experience to accept what little you know. It sounds absurd, right? It sounds paradoxical to be lost in the soup of the universe, to be floating along on the flotsam and jetsam of life, to have a little bit of understanding of what it is that you want, but that the big expanse of everything else is going to do what it does. But somehow, by reducing that grip on control, by reducing that need for the story, by making the impermanence larger, and by making the, the, the things that you hang your story on less significant, the depth to the world magnifies and you can start to see everything going on around yourself in a similar way. And so the world's kind of staccato noise, the jagged edges, kind of smooth away. They become more understandable. There's less battle to life. Life becomes easier. It becomes smoother. You, you get into a state of flow more often. And when you're not in a state of flow, somehow you're in a kind of an underflow of acceptance. Everything feels at ease at its core. You can find your place of peace and tranquility, you know? Accepting that sometimes you've got massive energy, that sometimes you are sexually charged and, and that it's, it's, it's so powerful, it's out of your control sort of thing. That your willpower says one thing, that your anger says one thing, that emotions and messages inside of you exist, but that you have a choice that you can respond rather than to react, which comes from that sort of humility and that, and that self-understanding of what it is that you cannot understand. You grow, you grow and you grow and you grow and life becomes richer and richer and richer. And you need less and less and less. It's, it's wild, it's absurd. And it's only when you experience it, you know, me pontific about, pontificating about it isn't sufficient. But the reason I talk about it is, <laughs> is to kind of allow people to grab themselves by the collar and go, Oh, maybe it's worth a try because it's, ex it's, it's extremely, extremely difficult to get out from inside your story, right? This is why most people have this after the dark nights of the soul, yeah? After a shock to the system. But believe me, there aren't many things as sure as if you continue down the route of nice guy syndrome, something is going to go wrong. 
because the entire thing is a massive lie, yeah? So the only thing that you have in your power is your choice of response. And are you gonna choose something which is good for you, even if you're not sure that it's gonna work, or are you gonna stick in the system? You know, the definition of insanity is continuing to do what you did yesterday and expecting things to change. Give it a go is what I'm saying. Experiment. Try accepting what it is to be you and what the conclusions are of that and then ex um, re-examining the conclusions of that and seeing if your conclusions are your conclusions or if they're coming from elsewhere. What does your stomach say? If you're like me, you might have got to the point where you were like a brain being transported by a body and you thought that everything was in this intellectualizing element. I don't know if that's relevant to you. For me, that was a huge, huge, huge step to stop pontificating and stop thinking about everything and consider that there's more to me and that maybe my stomach has a point of view. No. I'm not sure if the subconscious is a thing. It's a very useful metaphor. It's a very useful way of using a rule of thumb to describe something which is phasmagorical, which is too complicated for our brains because it's very hard for us to analyze ourselves. But if there is a subconscious or if there are multivariable parts within our psyche that need to express themselves. If you focus on the singular story, the story of the chattering mind, and you, you batten down the hatches and you deny the rest of that or you ignore it, you're missing out on an extraordinary richness of life and you're missing out on a massive opportunity set because if there is a subconscious or a non-conscious or a back of your mind or a part of you that is speaking more quietly than the chattering part of your mind. If you can find a way to create a vehicle for those parts to express themselves, well then, wow, suddenly you've got a thousand and one extra options that are all you. They're not coming from outside of yourself. They're not coming from me. They're not coming from a friend. They're coming from you. And so they also feel like you. And so your strength in your core, in your heart grows. You know? Apparently there is a resonance that can transmit even by video. And I don't know if you can feel the resonance in me when I speak about this. But when you stop in your story, your heart opens. I'm gonna shut up there. I hope that's of interest, yeah? Thanks for watching. You're not on your own. There's loads of people like this. Doesn't matter what this is. There's loads of people like this. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye. Bye.